Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Pierre Courts of Kindness. How are you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, what I have for you today is a shallow cut version of how I make an Iron Man bracelet. Um, I'm not going to show you the stitching. I'm simply going to show you the weave itself. Here's the one I've done. It's rust and gold with burgundy diamonds, and it's got a gold zigzag stitching. Uh, I'm not going to do the stitching today. Uh, that's a video for another day and another time. Here's one that we'll be working on today. The black anthracite, and it's got the zigzag stitching in anthracite also. But if you want to see how I do this, stick around because we'll get right to it, folks. Okay, folks, I'm back. I'm set up. Uh, I'll make this quick. We're going to do a, sh uh, a shallow cut version of this, so I'll make this rather quick compared to my normal videos. First off, as always, shameless plug. This is a stitched royal lion. I believe this is the latest tutorial. It's a deep cut version, so it's rather long, but I go into, you know, all the tips, tricks, commentary that, you know, this channel is known for. But I I'll put the link for this in the cards and in the description below. Okay, here's one I made. I don't have the tutorial. All it is is a bead. Everybody seemed to like this one. Sim you know, elegance and simplicity, I guess. Little bead, silver with, it's labeled as burgundy, but it's kind of burgundy, red, whichever, inlay, and then, you know, two snake knots to center it on either side, and then, you know, basic shackle with some imperial red whipping. Quite simple. Um, okay, with that said, let's see, where, where, where are we going to start off? First off, credit where credit's due. This is a Cetus weave. Um, as far as I know, this one doesn't have a video tutorial on YouTube anywhere. I couldn't find one. Um, the only place I know of is from directly from his books. Um, this would be Live Paracord Volume 2, page 60 and 61. And hence why I figured I would do a tutorial for this. But, got to give credit where credit's due. This is a really good weave. I, I um, It's not that hard. It takes a little time to do. Um, and I'll most likely come back later. Not in this video, but I'll most likely come back later and do a video on how I stitch this thing. But this is simply going to be for the bracelet itself. Okay, let's see. Um... As always, all the numbers, measurements, specifications, all that, that's going to be down below. Uh, so look to that, and you can get all that information. Okay, let's see. The only thing I'll tell you is about, you know, like I've said before, I make a distinction. A lot of people don't, they don't do this. Um, they never thought about it, I should say. But when somebody explains it, it makes sense. There's a distinction between core setup and cord orientation. Meaning, let's see, like a fishtail. That's the basic example that I think most people would recognize. When you start off a fishtail, you have two cords on either side. Well, in order to actually start the weave, you have to orientate your cords in order to set up for the weave. And on a fishtail, you have to get them both on the, both on the same side, right? So you have to orientate your cords. Well, this orientation for this one, the core setup is a four-strand cord. You know, cow hitch at the top, double cow hitch at the bottom, and you come back up, right? Well, to orientate your cords, it's pretty simple on this one. It's, you take your extra accent piece, uh, if you want to call it an accent piece, um, and I've just ran it through, I've done it like he's done it in his book, which is rather simple. You just run it through that cow hitch in the center at the top, and you got the, a little bit hanging out the back, um, and what I normally do is I leave enough there, that way when I come back at the end, I can attach my fid or my lacing needle, whatever, and back weave it into the back of the bracelet. That's why there's so much of it right there, okay? And then, you know, all your excess goes to, you know, you can go to either side, but um, I got it on this side because that's the way I'm going to start. But you see, I run it through this cow hitch and I have the excess coming out that side and in the front. And the slack in the back coming out that side in the back. Does that make sense? Okay, so with all that said, we're going to get this and we're going to pin this up out of the way so it's out of the way as we weave. 
Okay, now, let's get to the actual weaving part. Like I said, this one's not hard. It's not... <coughs> it's not a fickle knot you have to manhandle to work and get it to look right or anything like that. Now, like a lot of the weaves by Cetus, you, you have to, you know, weave it and then tighten it up kind of in sections. Tighten up this section, tighten up this section, and tighten up this section. But this one, it's not really hard. It's not hard at all. Um... And it, it naturally kind of falls into place. Like I said, you don't have to work with it. You don't have to manhandle it to get it to look right. It just, if you tighten it up correctly, bam, it's there. It's pretty simple. Okay, so with all that said, let's get started. Here, let me zoom in and I'll show you this. The, uh, the way I did the cord orientation. Like I said, it's going through this middle cow hitch and it just runs through the, the two cow hitch. It don't run through these side knots, just the cow hitch. Right, and the one that comes out this side, it's coming toward the front, and the other one is going toward the back. If that makes sense. Maybe you can see it better there. Okay, so with all that said, let's see. Yeah, let me back out just one. That way we can get. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, in order to start this with, let's see. First off, we've got. What I've got going on here is anthracite, which is a very dark gray, and then the accent, if you could call it an accent piece, um, is black. Now the way I've got these orientated, just so, just so we can know here, I'll show you an example. Here's one I did. This is gold with burgundy diamonds, and this piece is rust. Okay, so the way I've got this set up, the core strands, which is this dark gray anthracite, that's going to be, obviously you can see up here, it's, it's the one running through the buckle, and that's going to be the one that's the solid color on this one. Right? And this extra piece, the accent piece, I guess if you will, is the one that's got the diamond pattern on it. Right, and you can see how I've stitched it. it it's kind of hard to see because it, it's very subtle, but it, there's a gold kind of a zigzag stitch running down it. And like I said, I'm not going to show the stitching today. I'm going to just show the bracelet itself. Okay, with all that said, this is supposed to be a shortcut, Tindall. Stop talking and just get to weaving. Okay, so we're going to start off like this. This is how you would do this. It's not, like I said, it's not very hard, but I do have a lot of this accent color. So, you know, let me be mindful, be patient with me. There's, there's quite a lot of it compared to the other two. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're basically, <clears throat> we're going to start off, we're just going to take this, it's on this side, basically, it's on this side of the, for the, for the most part, it's on this side. So we're just going to kind of run it this way. And then we're going to take this working end on this side, the main cord, I should say, that's coming off of the, the core. And all we're going to do, if we can see this, we're going to go over the top of the black, or the accent piece, all the way over, like that. We'll just do it that way. That'll make it easy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back. We're going to go over one, under two, and over one. Over one, under two, over one. And then, we're going to go, this accent piece, we're going to go under it. And you're just going to pull. Mindful of the twist. All right? Now, we're going to take the accent piece, the black. Now, I'm going to follow it out to the end. Like I said, there's quite a bit here. So, I'm going to follow it out to the end. The end. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go up under this one and I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see and we're going to go underneath this first core strand and come up through that first slot 
Okay. Now this little working in, this loop that we've created, we're going to go basically under that because we're going under the core strand. And then right here, we're going to go over where the accent cord itself actually started. You see that? And we're just going to pull. And obviously we're going over this one because this one's down out of the way. We're just going over the top. And we're going to pull. So basically what we're doing, like a lot of these weaves, this black cord, the accent cord if you will, is started on this side, we weave it, and it's going to come back. And then we're going to do it the opposite direction. You see what I'm saying? It's going. To, this one is going to ebb and flow back and forth. And as we go down the bracelet, we're going to alternate between this working strand and this working strand. That's the rhythm of this one. Okay? So there's the weave right there. All that. Now, to tighten this one up, it's not really that hard. You can kind of take out the slack. I, this is the way I found it. I found it to be easier if on this accent cord, this piece right here, this loop, this kind of going around leave that leave leave that because that's where you're going to do some pulling on okay but everything else pretty simple just kind of push it up and take your main core working end you have here and just kind of pull it you take your thumb and kind of roll it down this way and you pull out the slack now, i am going to be stitching this so i'm not going to pull it as tight as i normally would there's your tip a lot of people don't ever think about this if you know you're going to stitch a bracelet, if you if you're one like me who pulls it as tight as you can, but you know you're going to stitch it, nah, maybe don't pull it as tight. That way, when you come back to stitch it, it's not as hard to get that stitching needle through. Makes sense. It's a happy balance there. You know, as you do it and get more experience, you'll 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 know how tight you should or shouldn't pull it. But anyway, all right, we push everything to the top. We take that one, kind of roll it with our thumb, get the slack out, and just pull this side. Then we're going to take this front side of this loop, and what we're going to do, it's going to tighten up this right there. That's all that is, right? And you kind of hold your thumb, kind of hold it there, and then just pull this, and it's going to tighten up this. Here, I'm going to do it this way so you can see it. Pull that accent cord and it'll tighten this loop over here. And as you do, make sure it's not getting a twist in it as you do it. So I'm going to try to do this so you can see. Bam. And that's, that's, that's it. That's all there is to it. Now we just do a mirror image on the other side and ebb and flow back and forth all the way down the bracelet. All right? Now. We've got this one coming out. It's on this side, the accent cord. The next, next repetition push that up it's on this side and it's angled out this way right so what we're going to do we're going to take our working in from this side and we're going to bring it over the top of everything over the top of the accent and the full work and full core strands and then we're going to take our end and we're going to go like we did but we're doing it from the the other direction over one under two and over one and we're gonna go under everything over here we see that over one under two over one bam right through the thing I'm gonna pull it pull out the majority of your excess now take your accent piece find the end of it And we're going to go under here, and we're going to go under the first working, or the first core strand, up to that first slot. And we're going to come up. And we're going to go across, obviously, the black that we just did. And we're going to pull our slack through. And when we pull the excess through, like I say, 
leave a little bit on this loop because that's that's one of the places you're going to want to grab right maintain this loop now we're just going to kind of push up and take this one and kind of pull it right, and it's going to take that out like I said you can take your thumb and kind of roll it and it'll push that slack down as you're pulling this direction rolling your thumb across that one right there and it'll help get the slack out right now that we did that we reach back here and we grab this one and kind of keep your thumb I, I've noticed this if you try to do this pull this and you're not holding your thumb here it's going to kind of want to come down the slide back down so I hold my thumb right here to keep it from moving down and then we'll pull this one that's going to tighten up that little loop right there Alright, I'll go to switch hands and we'll pull this one and it'll tighten up this black loop. Push it up, we'll look at it, make sure everything looks right, everything looks right. Okay, now this one again, we're on this side and we're going to work our way back. Like I said, it comes out the top, it comes out on this side but it's angling down this way. So we're going to leave it that way. We're going to take this working in. We're going to bring it over the top of everything. And then we're going to go. Over one under the two and over one let's separate these over one under two over one and then under this one pull your slack up. All right. find the end of your the accent piece the really really long one you're gonna have And we're going to go underneath here and I'm going to try to do this so you can see it a little bit better. We're going to take it and we're going to go underneath this four, first core string coming up through that slot. And if you've got all this, once you do this a few times you'll see what I'm, it, what I'm about to show you will make sense. You'll have this loop on this side to work it done main cord working in and then I accent piece right here just bring that thing straight up and then over this direction and that'll that'll get it set up in the right place where it needs to be and then you just pull your slack through your excess through remember leaving some on this loop because that's what we're going to pull we're going to tighten up with and again we're going to reach down here kind of take out a little bit of the excess as you push it up and then pull, pull this direction, holding back this direction. And that's all there is to it. And then we're going to take this one. If you can see this big black loop sticking up, we're going to pull this one and it's going to pull that. Right? And we'll, I always switch hands and pull, and it'll take that loop out right there in the back. Mindful of that twist. Notice I was rotating here to get the twist out. And then we just pull it and tighten it up. Give it another to the top. Make sure everything feels good. There you go. That's that. That's all there is to it. I'll do this one more time and there you go. I'll leave you to your to yourself and you can go make you one. Accent cord on this side. Angle this direction. This working in. Comes over the top of everything. From this side, we're going to go over one, under two, over one, and then under that one. Pulling your excess through. All right. Now, we take our accent cord, we find the end of it. We 
We're going to go. Underneath. Okay. Underneath. Under the first core string and up to that first slot, and just bring it up in between the two. Between this main working cord and the accent cord. And we just pull our excess through. Get out all the twist as you do it. And leave that little loop back here. Push it up and kind of take out your slack as you do it. Push it up. Take this one and pull it. Using your thumb to get the slack down through there. Reach back here. Tighten up that one. We got a twist forming here, so I'm going to rotate my hand here to get the twist out as I pull it. That's it. That's all there is to it. On this side, do it one more time. Over the top of everything. Over two. Or over one. Under two. Over one. Under the accent. Pull it through. Find the end of your accent. Under here, go under the first working strand, working core, I should say, working core strand, and just come straight up. In between the accent on one side and the working cord on the other side, these two little bites you have here. Just come straight up and over to this direction. Pull it through, maintaining that little loop right there. As you push it up, kind of work your slack out. And then you got to pull here, rotate with your thumb, grab here, tighten, tighten that down, switch hands, and pull there. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Why does this want to sit? Looks like it's kind of sitting crazy. But that's it here. I'll zoom in and you can see. You can get a look at it and you can see that. You can see the pattern starting to form. But like I say, this one's, this one's rather easy. It's rather easy. It's not. It's not anything hard. But there's your, there's your shallow cut on the Iron Man by Cetus from Volume Two, Page Sixty. And with that, I'll end this one like I end them all. Keep it neat. Keep it clean. Keep it tight. Happy weaving, folks.